Hey guys, welcome to week 14. Um, again, this six weeks we're studying physics or some experiments looking at the movement of things, the study of motion. Um, again, with this, we're back to true science experiments, so you want to use the scientific method. Go over that. That's the most important thing each time um, is discussing so the kids can tell you what the scientific method is. Their question or purpose, the background information, hypotheses, what are your materials, what are the steps we use in procedure. Analyze all that together and then come up with your conclusion. Um, so these are pretty easy to walk through that together. Um, so again, with the study of movement, today we're talking about the transfer of movement of heat in the first one, and the second one, the movement of water molecules. Um, so for the first one, cold feet, number 165 in vein cleaves, is pretty simple. It's a experiment to talk about conductor versus insulator. What materials are good conductors, or what the, which ones transfer heat well versus which are ones that are insulators or they hold heat up. For this, you'll each have a piece of aluminum foil and then a carpet remnant um, or a little piece of carpet that I've cut up. So you're going to just lay those on the floor, leave them there while you're talking so they can both be on the same temperature, theoretically, um, sitting on the floor. Then you're going to have kids. Um, you can demonstrate first. Take your shoes off. Um, if you have thin socks, that's fine. Otherwise, if they're thick, fluffy socks, you'll need to take those off too to really feel the experiment. Um, put one foot on the aluminum foil, one foot on the carpet, and then try to decipher which foot feels warmer and why. Um, and what you'll find is the aluminum foil, the foot on the aluminum foil is colder and that is because metals, like what's in this foil, the aluminum, um, transfer heat. So they are actually pulling heat from your body and um, transferring it to the ground below. So your foot feels colder because they're stealing the heat from your foot. So it leaves it feeling colder. Versus the carpet is a insulator. And so it does not transfer heat well. And so the heat, it holds the heat up against your foot so it continues to feel warm. Um, so again, conductors transfer heat well um, and insulators hold the heat in. So then that being said, so each kid will get a turn to feel the difference. Um, and again, socks are an insulator because they're fabric. So if they're more than just really thin, you'll want to take them off to really get the feel. Um, so then talk about around the house. What are conductors that we use in our house? And of course, pots and pans are one of the most obvious ones. Um, our stoves that transfer the heat, the pan then transfers the heat to what's inside of it. Whereas what are insulators in our house? Well, our clothes are insulators. Um, carpet is insulators. The insulation in our walls and floors, they hold heat in. So they don't transfer it well, but they do a great job holding it in. So that's conductors and insulators um, and the experiment cold feet. The second experiment we're going to do is called pepper run. Pepper run is talking about um, the bond of water molecules and the movement of water molecules. So water molecules actually have a very strong bond. They like to stick together. So much so that they create a type of tension when they're all together in a body of water um, or sitting like in our example here in our bowl. They create this surface tension because they are connected so strong together. So objects that are really light can actually float on top of the surface because they've created this like skin or barrier of surface tension. Um, so that's, you can talk about water bugs and how they can just walk right across without sinking um, because of their density, because of how much they weigh, um, and they're lighter than the tension from the, the water molecules together, surface tension. So you can talk about that a little bit, ask them what they know about water molecules, what they know about surface tension, have they ever seen, you can have pictures of water bugs or anything like that floating on the surface. Um, and their hypotheses, what do we think is going to happen today 
we have our bowl of water, we've talked about surface tension. When I put a little bit of pepper in there, so we're gonna talk about that, and then another hypothesis will be when we're gonna actually add dish soap, what's gonna happen when we break that surface tension. So our materials are a bowl. You each have a bowl in your bin, a little container of pepper, dish soap, and a toothpick. Um, so those will each be in your bin. You're going to just fill your bowl about halfway through um, with water from the sink. You then are going to sprinkle some pepper right on top. And hopefully you'll be able to see this well. And so you've got two things happening here. Um, one is you have the pepper floating, um, kind of equally distributed on that bowl um, or on the surface of the water. And so the water molecules are all equally pulling on those little pepper flakes. So they kind of pretty much stay in place. Um, they're not floating to the edges, floating to the middle. They're just kind of floating evenly distributed because the water molecules are on each side of the flakes evenly pulling. Um, the other thing you happen to have happening is the surface tension where the flakes are floating right on top because of the bond of the water molecules and the pepper is really light. Um, so then you want to say, well, what would happen if we break that surface tension? One um, object or one liquid that breaks surface tension is dish soap. Um, that's why we use it to wash our dishes because it can help wash the water and the oil down our drains. And so you just get a little bit of dish soap on your toothpick and I'm going to make sure you can see what happens here. Once you put the dish soap in very quickly the pepper um, kind of magically goes out to the side. And that is because the dish soap broke the surface tension of the water molecules. The water molecules want to stick together, so they go away from that tension that broke it. And as they do that, they pull the pepper with it. Um, and so there was a movement of water molecules, which we saw by the pepper moving so quickly. Um, and that was the movement of water. So, um, so yeah, so you can, if you want to do that again and experiment with like, well, what happens if we touch the side instead of the middle? You'll have to rinse the bowl out and start with a clean water um, for it to work. I also put in here a devotion um, that you can just go over briefly at the end. This is a great visual for um, two things in our faith. One is when the blood of Jesus, when we accept Jesus into our lives, he's like that dish soap. He washes us clean and our sin um, is pushed away um, as far as the east is from the west. And so um, that's one example. The other is when we have Jesus in our life, we want to flee sin. We want to flee temptation, um, just like the book of James tells us. And so you can use that pepper as sin. And when we have Jesus in our lives, we want to flee. We want it to go away and not live in the presence of sin or temptation. Um, so add that in at the end because it's just a great visual for that. Thanks.